Hi, I'm Rebecca Harris, and welcome to this edition of Faces and Places. We are starting out our brand new year, and with that, we always have New Year's resolutions. And one of my New Year's resolutions is to be more organized. And so I did a little bit of research, and I found out that there is a company that helps you with this in our area called Silver Service. And the lady who started this company is Emily Rocher. And just by talking to you on the phone, I realized how passionate you are about this, so I'm excited to learn things from you. Well, thank you. I'm, it's my favorite subject to downsizing and uh, organization. I got started in 2010 as a senior move manager. I was looking online for a new career helping mm -hmm. seniors and came across the National Association of Senior Move Managers. And so I got started, got certified, went back to college, got my master's certificate in gerontology so I could help my clients better and got certified as a senior and senior advisor. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I didn't yeah. know that such a thing existed. <laughs> right. Most people don't. There's about a thousand across the country. That's amazing mm -hmm. that we have you right here in our area. So that if anybody has any questions about what you do, then they would be able to contact you, right? Yes. Yes. My, okay. My, Tell my, us how we can contact you. Uh, my phone number is 706-575-6648. Or you can email me at emily at silverservicega.com. Well, Emily, I want to thank you for inviting us into your home today. <laughs> and I understand that when you do this job, you go out into the homes of clients or people that you know. So tell us a little bit about that. So we usually start with a free consultation, mm -hmm. go into their um, house and talk about, most of my clients are moving, but many of them want to stay at their house and um, just need to downsize, have less things in their home. And it's hard to do it by yourself because they've got lots of reasons why they want to hang on to things and right. I'm, I'm uh, the one that talks them out of some of their clothes and their <laughs> shoes and their their accessories and um, just extra things around the house. Mm -hmm. Well there's a lot of new shows on television right now about downsizing and organizing and those are very very helpful but I do know that from a personal note when we've had deaths in the family or just you know we've had elderly people that we needed to help move it can be a pretty traumatic thing so yes. I'm very excited about what you do and how you help the community. Well thank you. We move people all over town there's a lot of new communities um, sprouting up everywhere, mm -hmm. retirement communities, um, assist living, uh, memory care, and a lot of people don't live where their children do right. anymore. The children right. have moved away and they have a job and they have families and so they can't necessarily come to town and mm -hmm. spend two weeks to help mom or dad get moved over. So it's a fun job helping people every day. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm excited to get started. So Emily's going to take us through her house and show us some of the little small things that she's done to make her organized in a little bit easier. Okay. So let's yeah, get started. So uh, one of the things, um, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a minimalist, but I, I'm a wannabe minimalist. So just getting less things off off the horizontal surfaces. So we talk about, you know, how many, how much is enough? You know, what are you comfortable with? Do we want, you know, 15 pictures here? Mm -hmm. Or would you be more comfortable with one or none? Mm -hmm. um, uh, lighting is always good. You want to have plenty of light in the, in the house. Um, uh, going through the drawers, sometimes that's a good place to start, is a small drawer. Mm -hmm. um, take out the things that you, take everything out and only put back the things you really need and love. So we use that need and love a lot. Um, so we want you to have everything you want, but we don't need all the extra. Right. Uh -huh. Well, I know there's a fine line between making your space look like a hotel room yes. and keeping it personalized but decluttering. So mm -hmm. um, one thing that I like to do is change things out with the seasons. Yes. So I keep bins and what I do is like if I want to uh, perk things up for the spring, I take different things out of the room and replace it with brighter colored things and then that way I don't have it all out at one time. Yeah. Especially at Christmas time I do that and, and we just take everything out of the room and then replace what we want with our Christmas decorations. Yeah, that's a great way. And it, it just kind of keeps the, the home fresh and mm -hmm. something different to look at all the time. And I know with seniors that's pretty important because my brother lived with me for a while and I think you know he had brain damage and so it was very important for him to be able to see the seasons changing. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So that was one yeah. little thing that we did. Mm -hmm. We do like you to purchase clear bins and that yes. way when you store them in your attic or garage you can look and see what's in them instead of those dark ones that's you know what's in there we don't know that's right <laughs> 
So we're in my kitchen now and she wanted me to show her some tips that we use to, uh, with the clients on downsizing. So one thing is um, when you have different sets of glasses, a lot of seniors have had several sets through the years and we just keep a few of the set that matches. So whether it's four or six, um, I have a lot of relatives so we have to have a lot of things. But to, to keep like items together. Um, the mugs, uh, no, I don't drink coffee so it's easy. I don't have a lot of uh, <laughs> mugs that I love so we just keep a set of mugs and um, you know it's okay to have empty spaces in your cabinets. Well um, I notice you don't have any appliances sitting out on your countertops. Right. Well like I said we don't drink coffee uh -huh. but even so it's you don't have to have the coffee maker out um, 23 and a half hours of the day right. when you only use it for a half hour in the morning. Um, I do like an empty countertop, but we don't make our clients do that. So we usually have, you know, a toaster mm -hmm. oven, a microwave, uh, um, the coffee maker. Right. Um, I'm able to put my toaster oven in the cabinet because there's electricity in there, so I get to cheat. Well, that <laughs> so, sounds great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what else about the cabinets? Um, let's see. So nesting items together. So if you have round bowls, you want to um, nest them all together, mm -hmm. and you don't really want one round bowl, one octet. Um, uh, oval, mm -hmm. some rectangular. Mm -hmm. If you have like items, you can nest them together. So That's we right. like the sets of bowls and the sets of, um, you know, that stack together. M a lot of my clients are going into a very small kitchen. So um, even if you have a big kitchen, doesn't mean you need to keep everything. That's uh, right. What about collectible dishes? Because I know that a lot of people have sets of dishes that belong to their grandparents or they've been passed through their family. Right. And young people these days are, are not really wanting you to give them that. So what, right. what happens with those things when you go in the client's home? So it's hard. It's very hard. But yeah, I tell them to use the good china that was their grandmother's. Your mm -hmm. kids don't want it. Your grandkids don't want it. You might as well use it every day. Right. You've saved it and kept it in such great condition for you know 50 years and I right. say just go ahead and use it um, but just keep your favorites and if it's something that you have boxed up in the closet it means that you don't need to keep it so either you use it or display it enjoy it but if it's in a closet in a box it's, it's not doing you any good so it's hard to part with and it is hard to part with and, and one of the things that we did for one of my aunts is we took pictures of it. Yes. And great. that way she could look at it and remember that she had it, but mm -hmm. she still didn't have to carry the boxes of the china around mm -hmm. with her that she had not unpacked in 40 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. So pictures are a great option. So mm -hmm. I tell people, you don't have to keep it forever. Take some photographs. Right. That way the memory is not caught up with the item. You can right. still have the memory in your heart of grandma's dishes without having them um, in your cupboard. So um, while we're talking about pictures, also the a lot of people have photographs in um, frames uh -huh. and they have a lot but they want to downsize that so I recommend you take them out of the frame and put them in an album and that way you could keep it on the coffee table. Um, seniors love to look at their pictures and their family pictures so we don't get rid of the pictures but we do get rid of some of the frames. Mm -hmm. All right. Well tell us about some other tricks. Um, in the drawers, um, you know, like items together. Um, so a lot of my clients are downsizing. If you're in a small house and you um, only have seating for two, you don't need china and, and silverware for 12 people. So you can just keep six of everything or, or eight of everything. And um, that's a nice way to have, sometimes they're just overflowing with silverware because they've had many sets through the years and they kept every one. Yeah, so we downsize that way. Keep the best mm -hmm. and uh, donate the rest. So Emily, I know that you have a lot of tips that you can pass along to us because you do this as a profession and you've seen a little bit of everything. Yes, I have. So please tell us a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I recommend that you work in blocks of time. For my husband, that's 30 minutes. For my clients, we usually set up a three-hour block of time mm -hmm. where they're sitting in a comfortable chair and I'm helping them sort and downsize. Um, we separate items into the keep, a donate, sell, and trash, just like they do on the TV shows. Okay. It's, it's a great uh, program to just divide it all up. Um, keep only the items that you need and you love. And so we say that a lot. What do you need? What do you love? We get rid of duplicates. Some people have, you know, multiple sets of measuring cups mm -hmm. and things like that. So we like to get rid of the extra. I like to play music while I'm working in my house. It just makes the time go by faster. And um, even setting um, 
the alarm on your phone or something mm -hmm. for 30 minutes to just work and not stop because it's easy to get distracted. Right. We also like to stay in the room that we're working in instead of taking this to the kitchen and this to the bedroom. Just put it all by the door and keep working in that room for that block of time. Um, it's uh, give your grown children a deadline. So if they have things in your house, <laughs> <That's> perfect. <laughs> um, mine are grown, and you, I tell my clients, I mean, my clients, there are a lot of them in their 80s, mm -hmm. and their kids are <laughs> in their 50s and 60s. It's time to get your stuff out right, of their house. Right. So we give them a deadline. It seems like families are, the children are happy to have the things at your house, but when it's time to bring it to their house, they say, no, we can throw it away. <laughs> you know, their trophies and their, uh -huh. uh, all their uh, memorabilia. It's a good idea to bequeath things now. So if you have mm -hmm. a daughter, uh, I tell my clients, wouldn't it be better to have that china on your granddaughter's Christmas right, table right. than to be in your storage right. unit? So um, giving those things away, you know, uh, the quilts, uh, other family mementos, it's nice to give it away and tell the story about how you got it and why you're giving it to them mm -hmm. while that's you're still idea. living. Yes, that's, um, let's see. Keep only the clothes that fit <laughs> and the shoes that feel good. Um, some of our clients have, you know, a whole range of uh -huh. sizes and um, it's uh, talking people out of their clothes. It's a tough job sometimes because they're very attached, but um, it's a necessary when you're downsizing to another location. If you only have five feet of hanging space, we only bring five feet of clothes. So. Um, doing that, uh, we talked about the clear bins for storage. Mm -hmm. um, keep your extra photos in the album and not in the frames. Um, uh, try to take one or two bags out of the house a week. So if you're not moving and you're not in a rush, um, you know, one bag, two bags a week, that's 52, 104 bags going out of the house. And um, it's a lot easier. You take that little Publix bag and put mm -hmm. something in it and take it out. So that's a good tip. Well, I started a new thing this year mm -hmm. uh, in 2019 where I have two bags in my closet. One is a donate bag and one is a giving away bag uh -huh. for different people that I know might could use it. Right. And that way, as I'm hanging my clothes back up when I'm washing them, I think, have I worn this in a while? And if I haven't, then I go ahead and do what I'm going to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I make sure I get it out of the house by the end of the weekend. There you go. And if I bring anything into the house, I make sure I get rid of something. <laughs> so it really makes me think, do I want to mm -hmm. get rid of something to bring this right. into my house? Mm -hmm. And it's changed the way that I shop. Yes. Because yes. I'm not impulse buying so much mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, it's a very good observation because that's one of the things we notice is that you buy less mm -hmm. when you're in the downsizing mode. You you don't buy as much because you know you're already trying to get rid of things at the house and it saves you money that way. So a lot of people like to know where to start. So I say pick a room that you use the least. It can be a guest room. It can be the attic or the basement. We don't like to do attics in the summertime, so this is a good time of year to attack that attic. But remove the big things first. Sometimes people just have extra furniture. They've acquired things over time and every corner, every space is filled with furniture. And sometimes just getting those extra big items mm -hmm. out really can make a difference quickly in a room. Um, Let's see, it's easier to make those decisions when you're not in your personal space. So when we're working with a client, we never start with their closet or their kitchen or their bathroom. We want to start in places where they don't care as much. Once um, they start seeing how good it feels to get rid of some things, yes. it's easier to tackle the personal things. Right. Uh -huh. So when we're working with a client or I'm telling people how to, how to get started on mm -hmm. their own, do a drawer at a time. Just pull out the drawer, take everything out, only put back the things you need and love. Um, you can do the same with a closet, take everything off the shelf, um, bring it down. Some people have never, you know, seen the top of that shelf. <laughs> it's been up there so many years, but um, sometimes they find things they just are so happy they found that they had been missing for a long mm -hmm. time. And sometimes they say, oh gosh, I can get rid of that. So it's good to start in a place that you don't use very often. When I give presentations about downsizing, people always want to talk about the excuses. And so I thought we'd go over a couple of those. That sounds great. Um, number one, I might need it one day. So <laughs> a lot of us have things that we could borrow from a friend. I talk about those dispensers, you mm -hmm. know, that you, the big drink dispensers. Well, if you have a friend that has one, you don't have to have one too. <laughs> so we talk about, you know, borrowing things. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, 
it's a nice way to get rid of things or give it to somebody else and then you borrow it when you need it. Right. <laughs> um, some people say it's too important to let it go. Um, you know, those things that they inherited, but other people's um, important items don't need to be your important items. So if you're, if you're not using it, displaying it, enjoying it, it's time to let mm -hmm. it go. Um, my house is too small. Well, houses are 1,000 square feet bigger than they were in the 1970s, and our families are smaller. So we have just gotten accustomed to mm -hmm. gathering and getting more and more. But um, a lot of people like those tiny homes. You've heard of those, right. uh, eight, 880 square mm -hmm. feet, and mm -hmm. they're living there just fine and happy. Um, I don't have the time is one excuse. They, but how much time do you spend looking for your keys or looking right. for that important piece of paper right. or um, other items that uh, you just can't find because there's so much there? Um, I don't know how it got like this. People, t <laughs> people tell me that all the time. Well, you know, you're working and enjoying life through the years and slowly but surely it just grows and grows and grows mm -hmm. and um, it's time to tackle it and uh, help with that problem by letting things go. Um, it's not a problem. Some people say, oh, it's not a problem, but a lot of times they don't have their friends over anymore. They don't have their family over anymore, and so that is a problem. I'm all about relationships. As we get older, mm -hmm. it's not about our things. It's about our relationships with family and friends, and so we talk about um, uh, the, you know, like the hoarder show, some people are actually losing their kids because their right. stuff is more important than their family. So that's that's very sad to me. Right, and also I think that people get depressed and they don't know why they're depressed. And it's yeah. because they feel like all this stuff is closing in on them and they don't even realize that. Yes. Just like uh, I was speaking with an elderly lady just a couple of days ago about lighting uh -huh. in her house. She would have like maybe one lamp on because she didn't want to pay the power bill. <laughs> And, and then uh, she came to visit my house, and we have a lot of windows at, at my house, and she said, wow, I just realized I feel so much better because there's light in here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, well, that's, that's another thing to yeah. think about is feeling cluttered and not having enough light mm -hmm. in the room. So two or three lamps is mm -hmm. perfectly acceptable um, to have to, to brighten up the room. I think you're right about that. Um, it's not mine. We talked about that. If it's your ch children's things, call them up. <laughs> Give them a month. Say, it's going to go. You need to come mm -hmm. get it. Um, it was such a bargain. Sometimes we buy things because <laughs> it was such a bargain, but we didn't really need it in the first place. Right. And, and having things... Um, around you that you bought and don't need, don't make you feel good. So getting it out of sight may, would make you feel better. Do you run into a lot of people who go to the big box stores and buy 12 of something? Um, not too much, yeah. The, uh, the older generations, they're not so much into, um, you know, they, mm -hmm. they weren't working women usually. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them were stay-at-home moms and so they would just get as they needed. So they don't have, you know, but every once in a while you get, you know, a hundred things of toilet paper. And <laughs> And it's a single person, but mm -hmm. yeah, I don't see that too much as a, a problem with the older generation. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's too overwhelming, people tell me. Clutter denies you peace of mind. And I think we talked, we, we touched on that, is that mm -hmm. uh, a clear room gives you a clear mind, clear space. It just makes you feel better. I like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh huh. Well, um, one of my major problems is linens. Yes. First of all, I love linens. I collect linens, it's my weakness, uh -huh. and I think everybody that knows me knows that. And so people will bring me um, all kinds of things. But, you know, especially at Christmas time, I get so many blankets and throws, and I love them, but I don't need that many. Right. So what can I do with those kinds of things that I have excess of, and, and teach me how to store them? Okay. I recommend that you keep the ones you need and you love. Mm -hmm. So you certainly, everybody needs a blanket and everybody has their favorite blanket. So keep those, mm -hmm. but it's good to donate. Um, this time of year, there are people that are cold out there. And right. so um, I'm on the auxiliary for the Battered Women's Shelter and the Salvation Army, but there are a lot of great charities. I tell my clients to just pick their favorite charity. Mm -hmm. Um, think about somebody that's cold out there that could use um, the blankets, some children, you know, the elderly, mm -hmm. um, even the old towels, um, the, the um, paws and those different places would like your torn and old towels. Um, you know, they may not be good enough to donate to the, um, for a person, but mm -hmm. they, they, you really like those at the um, animal shelters. That's a great so, idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, would you mind showing us around your linen closet? Sure, I will. So we're showing off my linen closet. Um, I took some time to clean this out a, a year or two ago. Um, we do recommend that clients keep an extra set of sheet for each bed and some blankets. Um, the sheets are in the, the bedrooms, but we keep enough towels for our guests, extra pillows when they come, the, bath, the um, beach towels, and um, just keep the best of your towels. A lot of people have hundreds a hundred towels when I go to see them and we mm -hmm. just pick out the best and some of them they've never even used. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to start fresh with some nice towels. <laughs> well, we have a lot of company at my house and uh, at first I was thinking, oh my goodness, I have to have bedding for this and this and this and this. And then over the past holidays, we just told everybody that was coming, just bring your own pillows and blankets. <laughs> there you go. And that way I don't have to worry about storing them and they have their the comfort of their own things at That's my right. house. That's a great idea. I yeah. really like that. I'll have to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so Emily, I want to thank you so much for having us in your home today to talk about this because as the new year starts, I think it's so exciting to get that fresh start. Your home is lovely and it's not cluttered, but it still feels so homey. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I just wanted to go over a couple of the uh, benefits of having um, of d downsizing. Mm -hmm. One of them is the clear space, clear mind, um, allows you to do more things with your friends and family, uh, allows you to do things that you enjoy, your uh, hobbies and all. And as we discussed, less overwhelmed. Some people are just, you walk into their space and mm -hmm. you're overwhelmed. You know they must be overwhelmed to be surrounded by those things. Clear space gives you more to, um, a newfound energy, mental and emotional energy mm -hmm. that you may be missing because you're just overwhelmed with all the things around you. It, um, as we discussed, it, it affects your impulse control mm -hmm. because you're not less likely to just go out and buy one, just something right. just because. And the big one, less to clean. Who doesn't want less to clean? Yay, I yes. love that. <laughs> and uh, uh, owning less is better than organizing more. So that's one of my big takeaway is a lot of people want an organizer. I said, you just get rid of half your things. There's less to, <laughs> less to organize. So um, thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Well, Emily, we appreciate you allowing us to come into your home, like we said before. And um, if anybody wants to know how to get in touch with you, please tell us how. And do you have a Facebook page? I do. So my phone number is 706-575-6648. Our Facebook page is Silver Service GA. Our website is www.silverservicega.com. And um, yeah, uh, our... Um, I think you see a lot of information of other things we do mm -hmm. on the website. Mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. Well, I want to just say to everybody out there to keep your New Year's resolutions and I'm going to go home and get started cleaning out my closets <laughs> right now. That's, that's my big thing I need to do, especially my linen closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, it was fun. And you know, it's wonderful to be able to call a professional to come and help you, but it's also a lot of fun to call a friend. Um, there for a while, several of my girlfriends would get together and we'd go clean out this room together. Yes. And then a couple of weeks later, we'd go to another friend's house and mm -hmm. do it. We sort of pass things around each other. You uh -huh. know, that is a if wonderful I can't use idea. This, maybe my friend can use it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. You only call me when you really need it, but if you got a friend, that's better. Yeah. Well, I think you have become our friend now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Help with some, from Silver Service with some professional organization tips. Please give her a call. And uh, thank you so much. And Happy New Year to you all. Thank you for joining us today on Faces and Places, where you never know whose face you'll see or which place we'll be. Until next time.